Welcome to Le Grand Voyage with Chateau Malartic La Gravière. Before dawn on the 2nd of May 1945, there was a vicious and late frost that swept across France. Vineyards were especially affected, not least those in Bordeaux. Many vineyards lost between, I don't know, a quarter, a third, maybe even more of their entire harvest in just a couple of hours. By coincidence, later on that day in the early evening, Marshal Zhukov, commander of the Russian troops, finally took control of Berlin, in effect bringing to an end the Second World War. By the time that victory in Europe was finally declared, the 8th of May, the whole of France had warmed up. And in fact, what had begun was the greatest ripening season in the 20th century. Over the course of that summer, France warmed up, I guess, literally and figuratively. Many vineyard owners, chateau owners, had fled France during the war and they returned to find simply their vineyards were unkempt, but the fruit that was there was extraordinary. Their chateau hadn't fared quite so well. Many of them had been requisitioned by Nazi troops and they'd treated them very badly, in many cases vandalising them, leaving graffiti on the walls. There's even a story of a chateau that was doing some repairs in the 1980s and in 1988 they were still repairing the graffiti and the vandalism that had been left by the Nazi troops years before. When they brought the fruit in, it was magical and it created what many believe was the greatest vintage across those hundred years. Incredibly, it is still drinking well today. 65 years later, it was a wine that was not only remarkable but very long-lived. Extraordinary balance, fragrance and fruit. I'm very lucky in some ways. I've tried 1945 Bordeaux once. The tragedy is that I was seven and I can't remember what it tasted like. But I'm told that over the course of my lifetime, many people who have tried it say it's just the most extraordinary wine. It's an extraordinary wine not just for what it tastes of, but for what it represents. Famously at Chateau Mouton Rothschild, the returning Baron Philippe de Rothschild insisted that there was a V for victory that went on the label. And in many ways, it's a wine that doesn't just represent great winemaking, it represents freedom and victory. It was planted being expected to be sent to the Reich. It was harvested in freedom. In many ways, wine can sometimes represent something that's much greater, much grander, and that's possibly the greatest example. But you'll find your own wines, the wine of your birth year, maybe the wine of your marriage year, the wine when a child was born, the wine when something special happened. And there are a few regions in the world where the wine has that longevity to be able to be returned to, and you can taste that history in later years. I'm going to enjoy this from 2015. There are various things that I remember from that year. But what if you do? Make sure you come back and join us again tomorrow when we'll have more stories from Bordeaux. Cheers. Mm -hmm.